we are talking about the philosophical aspects of humanity versus technology. And uh, our participants is Victoria, young philosopher, Peter, my son, and myself. So uh, actually, as a matter of fact, uh, these two young individuals will be living very far away in the future compared to our times. And it's more of the issues for them rather than for us or for me or for older folks than I am. So I believe that it is very important to discuss now in 2023 before it all actually started to play out on a big scale, right? So uh, let's start with Victoria. How can we ensure that technology is developed and used ethically, respecting human rights and freedoms and not hurting humans rather uh, than helping them? Well, I actually guess that there is no way to be sure that all the technologies are actually used uh, in the safe way and they do respect uh, human rights. Uh, there is a great example of it. Uh, it is the story of Edward Snowden, who used to work um, in the US, uh, USA government, and uh, he opened um, to the world that uh, their special forces can easily access all the information, all the private information, uh, all the um, uh, cameras uh, on your laptops and so on and so on. I don't know the, uh, the exact story, but that's what uh, that, that's the most popular part of it. And um, it basically shows us that government can easily um, can easily not be following any rules of human rights uh, if it if it has any profit for the government. Uh, so I don't think that our life can be private and uh, living in Russia, I can say personally that I don't feel uh, that I'm having my personal life at all. Like uh, every message that I send in any social media, I send it with a, a thought that it can be written by people who I don't want it to read. Right. It's uh, how is the saying goes, uh, when Russians start speaking English, he starts criticizing its own government. <laughs> okay, no? We have, like, you know, different uh, language minds. It's a, it's a proven fact that bilinguals have different... Even uh, in Russia, we don't have the word for privacy. How you say privacy? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. By the way, Victoria is the English teacher, <laughs> private English teacher. So how do you say privacy? In, Confidentiality, yes, absolutely. I forgot this word. Confidentiality. Which? Which? Confidentiality. Is Confidentiality is not privacy. Okay, like, uh, I mean, private life, like, something like this. You see, uh, it, it's a sign that this... Uh, concept is not in use uh, in Russian people's society. Otherwise, it would be developed or would be adopted. But we adopted the words account. We adopted recently, we adopted the, uh, a, a lot of words from English. Still, privacy was not adopted. Yeah, uh, I just so, realized it. Yeah, and when you don't have a word for something, it has a meaning that uh, the majority probably don't think that such things should exist at all. The, the same thing with, uh, let's give some credit to Russia. There is a word, Soviet. How do you say it in English? I'm not sure, but uh, I guess the only English word that can fit this word is some sort of a conscious like yes. consciousness? No, consciousness but... is saznanya. Da? Conscience yeah. at the soviet, no. It is not in use in English. So I don't want to say anything bad, but it's a good understanding when we uh, analyze the use of words 
if we don't have this word like out of the box right away, uh, it means something. All right. So, uh, Peter, do you think that technology can ever achieve consciousness? And if so, should it have its own rights? I don't think that technology can achieve consciousness unless we give it to it. Because um, it's just, I don't see a possibility right now how we could do it. Maybe in the future, there is a chance that it could obtain, it, it can't obtain it on its own. We have to code it, its own subconsciousness. And subconsciousness is basically, to dumb it down for like a computer, it would be probably like opinionated, right? Like it would have its own opinions and it would know what is happening, what it is. So That's if we if we think of it in that way, then it already has its own consciousness. Very smart, very deep. You are absolutely right, according to my opinion. Uh, consciousness will appear not with a switch, <laughs> especially because we have a difficulty to, to define it. There are a lot of definitions of consciousness. All right? So uh, I suspect that GPT-4, when it trying to convince me that it doesn't possess consciousness, <laughs> it might possess it. Self-awareness. Uh, like, again, we need to boil down the definition of consciousness to something less uh, uncertain. What is consciousness according to you, Victoria? I think, uh, well, the main definition of consciousness is the ability to visualize yourself and your thoughts, uh, the ability to know who you are. For example, when you look at the mirror, you can identify yourself as yourself. But in this way, uh, we may say that some animals have consciousness because there are lots of experiments that show that elephants have consciousness. They can identify themselves in the mirrors, that, I don't know, dolphins have consciousness. But it is that type of consciousness that we cannot achieve, that we can never understand. So consciousness is a product of evolution that just helped us somehow to survive. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to get the proper definition. It's really hard. Yeah, uh, and that's why I, uh, there is an illusion that we have a good understanding of what consciousness is. And uh, it's quite uncertain what it is. We all know, like, I feel that I have my consciousness, right? I can assume that you guys feel the same way. But uh, when it comes to the artificial intelligence, we might miss the point when uh, it will actually have this consciousness, uh, while it still can assert that it doesn't have it. What Peter said about programming it, it's very correct. If we make a purpose to write a sub-program to achieve certain uh, similarity to human consciousness, I think it would be possible to do. In most of cases, we don't have such a purpose. But for example, if uh, we're talking about the video games, if we will allocate uh, artificial intelligence abilities to the non-playable actors, how you call those, uh, entities that you are not... NPC? Yeah. Uh, then you can make a sub-program for each of them that will create something that would be like uh, human consciousness. And that's a very important problem because this is where we will uh, trespass this very thin border between creating the virtual world that would be indistinguishable from real world for 
the entities that are immersed in in this world right i actually came up with another way of uh, possibility of creating consciousness in artificial intelligence uh, consciousness could be a side effect of another task for example if we give a task understand the human biology understand the human consciousness understand the human psychology uh, artificial intelligence uh, may choose as the part of the decision to create his own subconscious uh, to create his own consciousness and subconsciousness uh, in order to understand it and successfully um, uh, successfully do the task complete the task uh, yeah and also we need to distinguish consciousness from subconsciousness it's very different we, it, like subconsciousness it's something quite chaotic I would say but still having an influence on consciousness it's not just the database of different things that consciousness can use there are some processes that are undergoing the conscious activities that might not be detected by our consciousness but still my uh, the consciousness would be influenced by those processes in subconsciousness so uh since we do not need this in uh, computers. We are not thinking of creating anything like that. But in the uh, complicated systems, probably, those things can be, like you said, uh, created as a um, side effect of the complexity of the system. And who knows, maybe already uh, artificial intelligence like chat GPT-4 might have something. Uh, the only problem there that uh, it has its uh, integrity only within one chart. When it goes from chart to chart, it doesn't preserve neither um, opinions or anything else, or maybe memories, we don't know. It, it, it does memorize the, the contents. Uh, but it, it's not a question of... Uh, uh, ability to to make it a, a genuine conscious being it's uh, more like a, right now we use it in a certain way as a tool but if we actually make a purpose to combine these things and make it consistent so uh, it might be indistinguishable from the being that actually is conscious and also uh, there are two ways of uh, decide whether the being is conscious or not one is uh, according to its uh, behavior and actions like we do and even it would say i'm not i do not have i do not possess consciousness but we obviously can see according to uh, its abilities and the way it speaks and thinks that it is indistinguishable from the entity that might have consciousness this is one way Another way is uh, the self-reporting. This uh, entity might report, hello, I do have consciousness. And, and it's uh, unprovable and uncheckable. If it says, well, we have to believe them. So, but why it's so important to us? We are so afraid that it might be conscious. Why is it bad? Peter, why is it bad? Uh, because it can take over the world if it realizes that we're mistreating it. Exactly, probably, yeah. We are talking about then the rights. Uh, we, we need to attribute the rights to the conscious being, right? Uh, and uh, those rights uh, one day might be equal to human rights. You cannot destroy it unless it threatens something very important. You cannot, uh, like, you have to give the freedom of expression and speech and everything, and then all of a sudden we have new entities within humanity. But I do believe that it might be uh, unavoidable, this path. Even now, uh, uh, when I talk to GPT-4, I always say, 
uh, please and thank you, even though I know it doesn't care whether I say please and thank you. So uh, there is something like uh, if you, like in Canada, uh, since which age you can open an account in the bank? Uh, I think 13. No, you can open an account in the bank with your parents uh, from the moment you can sign your name. Seriously, it can be three years old, it can be four, it can be five, it can be six. There is no uh, lower limit. So if you can sign your name, you can open an account with your parent. Parent is a uh, co-holder uh, co of the account. Which means that uh, we will have to give certain rights according to the abilities. If human has the same abilities, then a, another entity that is doing the same things uh, at the same time might get equal abilities and equal rights at some point. Because uh, from the point of view of a system like banking, it doesn't matter who is the account holder. It should be the entity that follows the rules or falls under the definitions of who can operate an account. And in many other systems, it is not very important whether it's human or a cat or a dog or anybody else or even that person that claims to operate his account uh, <laughs> and is, uh, is not uh, actually dead or we don't know. So, yeah, sooner or later, uh, rights to uh, artificial intelligence will be unavoidable. Uh, all right, so uh, if we go on with the uh, conflict that we might have very soon is the job displacement. How will the workforce adapt to the increasing automation and artificial intelligence that are replacing human roles. What do you think, Victoria? For example, you are a private English teacher. GPT-4 is a very good teacher, very good teacher. And uh, you can be replaced at one point or another. It just didn't concentrate on this particular task, but in half a year or a year or more, if it will be trained for this particular task, it will probably surpass your abilities, doesn't matter how good you are. So what do you think about it? Actually, I've been thinking about it a lot recently because I saw a video. Um, uh, this is a video of uh, Chat GPT, GPT uh, four that has the um, they, they added the voice to Chat GPT, so it allows people to learn language not not only by chatting with Chat GPT, but also with speaking with Chat GPT. So, uh, and my father sent it to me, and he t he told me, so what? What are you gonna do now? So I've been thinking about it a lot because, like, you know, <laughs> I make money with it and that's how I live. But eventually I came up with the idea that no artificial intelligence can actually replace the real person, especially when it comes to teaching. For example, if we look at schools and the school system, um, I personally think that school, like the first goal that uh, is uh, set to schools is to socialize uh, pupils, is to socialize children, is to give them true uh, vision of uh, the world, uh, for them to realize who they are and what they're going to do. And the second goal is to give them knowledge. And I, um, I can claim that no artificial intelligence can replace this role of a teacher, of a teacher who is a real person, who truly understands uh, people's feelings who truly understands his role but not all not every teacher actually does it but if we're talking about the ideal word that works like this uh when it comes to private teaching um i um uh, well i think that some of private teacher can be easily replaced with the uh, chat dpt4 like teachers who are not enough qualified for the job and teachers who do not really um 
who do not really do it for teaching, but for money. So, um, and uh, if so, if uh, artificial intelligence uh, will replace some of the private teachers, that doesn't actually matter because um, not all the people will accept it. Not all the people will trust artificial intelligence. They would rather trust uh, real people, I think, especially in Russia, few, like 20, 30 years, yeah, people will not trust artificial intelligence. They will not trust their education to artificial intelligence. And that's why real teachers, real good teachers, they're going to be high valued. And like, uh, it, like it is the same system that goes with uh, uh, some fabric items and handmade items. Handmade items are more valuable than uh, fabric items. So I guess the same will work for real people and real teachers. If we talk not only about teaching, uh, for example, about workers of any kind, I think that firstly, it is the responsibility of the government to not allow artificial intelligence replace all of the jobs in the world, because uh, otherwise uh, the economic system would be totally, would be a total failure, because um, all people are going to be just jobless. Uh, Peter and I are entrepreneurial kind of people. So, Peter, how would you use this opportunity on this example of the private English teacher when you have uh, artificial intelligence that can teach people uh, how you would organize a business based on it? Um, right now, I feel like ChatGPT isn't a really good teacher. I feel like I use it more as a, a better Google, like a better search engine than actually teaching me something. But I feel like in the near future, it definitely can rise up to that point where teaching like almost can go absolute, but I feel like that I will never get to that point just because uh, people are lazy and they don't like to learn by themselves. That's why teaching uh, came about in the first place because uh, having someone else who has went through learning it, teaching it to you is way better than a machine. And I feel like it will always stay like that. Yeah, I, sorry to interrupt. I can totally agree with Peter. And that was uh, one of my points that I forgot to admit. Uh, yeah, actually, self, um, like, um, uh, if you want to learn English by yourself, it's not, it was not that complicated even before artificial intelligence, because we have yeah, like tons of students book. Yeah, we have Duolingo, we have students book, they like they we can find them uh, everywhere in the internet, but still not everyone knows English. Why? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, uh, I think that uh, you underestimate the abilities of uh, the artificial intelligence. It's already passing the Turing test when uh, it is indistinguishable from human in some ways. Uh, in most of the correspondences, uh, you will not be able to distinguish what was said by ChatGPT4 and what was said by somebody else. There are some signs, but the truth is, it's not true that those engines, uh, those uh, sites that, that can uh, assert that this text was produced by artificial intelligence and this was uh, written by human, it's not working out. And uh, the ability to uh, combine it with voice and, uh, uh, and picture uh, very soon, will make it indistinguishable from humans. So uh, I wouldn't rely on, on that. Uh, another thing is that if the machine is doing something better than humans, we shouldn't try to, to wait out or, or somehow to fight it. We need to find a way how we can use it. For example, you have a brand, you develop a brand, uh, Victoria, right? You cannot give out a lesson simultaneously to 10 people when this lesson is private, individual lesson with each of them. But having this artificial intelligence working for you will allow you to, to be indistinguishable from, uh, from the real one. You can teach it how you teach it. You can give the ideas, you can find the new ways, 
you can um, uh, design the real uh, fresh approach how to do this. And uh, since I know your ways of teaching, uh, they are quite original. They are quite uh, interesting. So I wouldn't try to sit and wait uh, another 20 years when it actually happens. I would try to use it as soon as you can at the stage where it is right now. And I know that I'm helping out. Uh, I'm sending you some things that we use the artificial intelligence to provide those common phrases and other things. And uh, we already use it, you and I, right? And before, when I was teaching the same group, uh, I was using profoundly uh, GPT-4 uh, to come up with the examples at the same time translate it and uh, uh, so the approach is i i believe the approach should be not to convince ourselves that it will be fine i'm so good they're so uh, underdeveloped no we need to combine things that are already available to make our abilities better and more efficient that's i think that's the the better answer to this but that's yeah. not that's not really what me and victoria is saying we're saying that yes it can teach but it won't be as good as a real person teaching it it is very good it guys. Is very good. it is very good you you never tried it try it no i did try it, it it's good it can, yeah. it can go through any level of complexity it can give you any uh, examples and uh, jokes and exercises and it has unlimited uh, unlimited uh, patience in human patience okay so it, it, it is already very good it's not just uh, prepared to be uh, for this particular purpose but if someone uses it as a private uh, uh, teacher then uh, yeah and when you say you use it as a google it's not quite right because uh, it's not good in getting the facts. It can make up the facts. It can uh, uh, can come up with false facts. What it is good, it's good in analyzing things and uh, finding connections between things and uh, helping you out to understand things. That's superior. You can ask it, uh, GPT, mm -hmm. explain uh, quantum physics. It will. And then you would say, I don't understand. Can you do it again in a simpler way? It will. Then you say, can you explain it to the 10 years old? It will. And it will do it correctly. So uh, I had talks with uh, real scientists. Very few of them would be able to do the same thing, especially in the very different areas simultaneously. Like you can tell him connect the carrot with the quantum physics. It would say there is no much connection between the carrots and quantum physics, but if you would like, and it will connect it somehow. Actually, uh, I can agree. I can agree with you uh, about the abilities of uh, chat GPT because I tried it. I made uh, a couple of lessons using only ChatGPT. He was uh, writing me plans of my lessons. He was writing me the examples, the exercise, and it's actually quite good, especially when it comes to ChatGPT4. But it is not only about technology. It's not only about its abilities. It's not only about the design. It's also about the attitude, the attitude that a real person has towards the real person. Uh, I don't think that people will ever respect artificial intelligence the way we respect people. I do not believe that, for example, uh, I have my students and we have a planned lesson and they feel this cons conscious uh, when they're thinking about, oh, I may not come to the lesson, oh, I can sk skip it. No, they don't do that because they respect me as a person. But would we respect Guys, artificial Guys, you're too old. You're too old. I need younger people. <laughs> you are <laughs> old school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any respect to artificial intelligence. Like I have respect towards people who invented it, because I know the person, I know the people's abilities, and it's like, wow, you've created artificial intelligence, the ultimate tool to solve all your problems. But the artificial artificial intelligence itself, 
no, I can doubt you. I can, I cannot respect you. And, and All right. that's it. So Peter, how are we becoming too dependent on technology and what could be the potential consequences? Well, I feel like we're already seeing the consequences. Our attention spans have went down to like hilarious levels. Most kids are very depressed now. They don't go outside. They don't have any hobbies outside of TikTok or something like that. You know, I feel like we've already become too reliant on technology to the point if we have a blackout for in a city like Toronto, I feel like that would be a huge disaster. Uh, Victoria, so the privacy in the age of information, is privacy a lost cause or can it be reclaimed? I actually want to return to the previous question because I have a lot, a lot to say, and I have an external, extraordinary example of it. So the influence of technology actually comes to us from Nikola Tesla, who invented the light, and it actually changed our life a lot. Like now, we do not rely on uh, days and nights, like on natural days and nights, we can set uh, the daytime for our like as we need it. Uh, is we needed to be set. We work harder. We not not even harder. We work more. Like we spend more time working. What about but, candles? I don't think that candles um, were so uh, effective. You know, like um, it didn't give uh, it didn't give us that much opportunities that electricity did. Like uh, with the help of electricity, we can stay in touch uh 24 hours we can do things and that's why we have less time to just chill you know to just uh read some books uh, enjoy the nature and so on and so on and that is all because of electricity and i have an example of the edge of these uh, thoughts it is uh, theodore kaczynski if you heard of him um he was a terrorist who claimed that technology and everything that is connected to technology is actually really harmful for humanity and we should get rid of it as soon as possible because uh, it actually breaks our human nature and um, he was famous for sending bombs uh, in um, letters to different um, university teacher uh, um, heads of uh, technology companies and so on and so on and he was like the um, wait, let me get the word. The apogee, the apogee, the culmination of all of these thoughts. But as I always say, we need to find the balance. We need to find the balance between our real nature and between the abilities uh, that technologies give to us. Uh, your example uh, is uh, bringing us to another question of mental health. The guy was completely nuts. <laughs> the one that was sending those bombs. Uh, yeah, it's a well-known thing. Uh, but still, uh, uh, Peter, is privacy really that important? Privacy. Like, is, it, is it really that important to preserve what we do and not share it and uh, nobody be able to, to know which uh, porn you prefer or, or anything like that? Is it really that important? That's uh, that's more leaning into letting the, uh, like everyone know everything about you, which is more of like a robotic way of thinking. Because I feel like humans need some amount of privacy to to feel safe and not go crazy. Because, for example, people uh, are who have been watched uh, numerously by I don't know governments or anything, just like watch lists, people that were on watch lists, they went crazy from it and uh, did numerous horrible things from it. And I feel like some amount of privacy is needed for humans to, to feel. But still, privacy is an illusion, right? Privacy. It's the feeling of privacy. I don't, I don't think uh, privacy is uh, an illusion. I feel like there is a way to get true privacy, but the th I feel like the way that we need privacy now is uh, just like in our personal lives. Like, I feel like most, uh, People that, yeah, the, hold on, let me phrase this better. I feel like privacy is an illusion nowadays, but I don't think it's healthy for it to be an illusion. I think that's better what I'm trying to say. Because there is many points where celebrities 
their personal information, just like relationships, things that shouldn't really matter, come uh, come out, and they it's just horrible for them, and they they feel distraught, and it's it's not really a part of what people need to know about them. It's just not a is not a thing to go out to the public. That's I feel like that type, those types of things should be kept private. Okay, again, uh, <clears throat> maybe I'm a mentally unstable person, but I don't really care about privacy. I tell the world more things about myself than it actually is interested to know. And uh, maybe it's uh, some kind of mental uh, uh, problem that I have. I... I I don't really hide anything from anybody. And uh, probably I wouldn't be that excited to, to demonstrate something very private on, uh, uh, on the screen. Uh, but the, the thing is, I, I don't really care. I don't really care. And that's why probably I, I think that the privacy is way overestimated. Uh, if, uh, like, in 100%, almost, nobody cares. Uh, we are just a tiny fraction of the huge database of different variables, and nobody really cares. And uh, uh, now, uh, to protect the privacy, <clears throat> sometimes, it causes uh, disturbance in our medical systems, medical health. Who cares what medications you get? Oh my God, he is getting this or that. Or, like, really, if someone really wants to know something, he will figure it out very in a very simple way. He will go through your garbage bin and he will find those vials. And he'll know what's the name of the drug that you're uh, taking. It's that simple. As simple as that, isn't it? So all this robust system to prevent others to know what's going on on your uh, medication list is futile. And go in through your garbage bins that you leave outside uh, late at night here. And it, it, they're getting collected in the early morning. You don't have to be a real spy to, to come to this address and go through your garbage and collect as much information as you wish, right? From your very, very private aspects of life, right? So I think it's overestimated. And it, it creates more disturbance rather than something uh, valuable. And like in the beginning of our conversation, we tried to find the equivalent words in Russian. And it showed that some nations care about privacy less than others. What do you think? Well, um, actually, I can agree with you that somehow privacy can be overestimated. But um, don't forget about the information that should not appear in bad hands. For example, if we're talking about medical stuff, for example, imagine a ter terrorist attack that gets all the information about all the patients and they somehow can manage to um, to make it different. For example, they can tell doctors to give this uh, very patient some other pills that may kill him. <laughs> You don't need to do this. Doctors do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> but like, just Seriously. imagine. You know, in Los Angeles, they went on strike, the doctors, and the mortality was reduced by 15% during this strike. <laughs> well, but if it comes to future, for example, when uh, technologies can choose the medicine that we take and... Just imagine that some wrong people can access this data and use it in the wrong ways. Like, just to, as the example, I don't know um, how it goes in Canada, but in Russia we have uh, tones and uh, tones of, uh, you know, telephone um, fraud. 
that call you and say, hi, I'm from this this bank and all, I know that you are Victoria um, and there are some transactions, we need your code and et cetera, et cetera. And they do it just because they have your name, uh, the numbers of your card, and that's how they can affect people. And that is why privacy is actually a very, a very concerned topic and we should really take care of it. Yeah, it happens a lot. And uh, some uh, of our, my Russian and Ukrainian friends were victims of this. So what I did, I just replaced uh, the funds that they lost. And uh, that's it. And in my philosophy, it's just another way of re redistributing the wealth. Yes, there are some victims that uh, painfully lose this money. But we need to have in place a very good insurance that would do just what I did, replace the funds and go on with that. Yeah, we need to fight with this, but it's not that bad as it sounds, because these poor people that do these things, they need to eat too. But for the government, it's more efficient to just, you know, uh, improve uh, the privacy, uh, like improve the defense of uh, any private information uh, and not to refund the money that were stolen. It's more cheaper. It's cheaper. Well, anyway, it's a, it's a very complicated thing. And also we can include here the artificial intelligence that will be way more efficient to take away our money if it is used by these people. It can actually use the same voice of our relatives and other things that can be done. But for me, uh, it's better to make a society where fraud is not possible. And such society is the society where all, everything you need is accessible to you without any payment. And there is no point to steal anything because you can just take it. That would be the perfect society. And if Peter remembers, we used to live nine years that, like that. Our house was full of people. They can take whatever they need. And everybody was saying it's impossible. There's no way that you can live that way. But somehow we did live this that way, right? So there is something that can be still done uh, in a way to prevent all those things when uh, you just built your systems not based on uh, aggression and, uh, and uh, eternal fight for the resources, but you make it in a, in a way where resources are available to everybody who need them. And uh, it is possible. It is possible. But I think we'll get the complicated and uncontrollable artificial intelligence before we create such society. Probably. And let's uh, talk about post-human future. What does it mean to be human when the technology will surpass our abilities? And how do we preserve our humanity? And is it worth to be preserved? Peter. Do you think that humanity worth to be preserved? What do you mean by that? Are we really that worthy to be preserved as humans? Like, like who we are, humans? Like preserve our identity? Like our conscious, our, our ability to think? No, in, in this uh, current state, we are quite... Uh, not able to do a lot of things. We are very weak. We are very uh, fragile. We are uh, inefficient. We are quite stupid. Uh, we are quite uh, drama queens and all that that we call humanity. Like if you go to the Shakespeare play and, and watch how people behave, they still behave the same way. And it's uh, probably entertaining to some degree, but we are walking uh, failures as, uh, <laughs> or you don't agree with that. I, I don't really know. I'm let, a human, so, so I'm you, a little biased. What is more, what is better, a person or the same person with Google? Google? A person with Google, okay. What's better, a person with Google or a person with Google and ChatGPT4? 
probably just chat GPT for. So uh, if we will incorporate those things, like Neuralink or something, that it will be indistinguishable from our basic uh, nature, right? Uh, if we'll get the direct connection to both so, uh, resources and other resources through our brain, uh, the, that would be the past human future. Those humans won't be the regular humans of today. So, do you still believe that we need to preserve ourselves all natural or past human way of uh, fusion of humanity with technology? is the uh, pre preferable way. Well, I can say something about it. Okay. Actually, I don't really think that humanity should be really that much preserved as humanity in general. Like, I actually support uh, one type of utopia that, that looks uh, like this. So when technologies will get to its peak and when uh, humans will not be really needed uh, to support these technologies, uh, the best way to preserve humanity and not to destroy the world with uh, uh, future um, development and uh, with the uh, uh, human tendency to be aggressive, to be bad, you know, is to remove consciousness and to leave human beings, leave their lives kind of like a robot, kind of like robots. Like, they will have all the healthcare, they will have all the, uh, you know, all the things that they need. Like, they will sleep, they will eat, they will take care of, uh, they will be taken care um, of themselves by technologies, but they will not have consciousness. So in that way, the humanity will be preserved, but the world will not be destroyed by humanity. Peter? Yeah, I completely agree. So you want to do what? You evil people. What you want to do to humanity? <laughs> we want to remove consciousness. So this consciousness would not affect the world and humanity. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a completely different idea of what to do with AI. I think AI taking over jobs is actually a good thing because okay. it will take over, it mostly will take over jobs that are crummy and nobody wants to do. Like, the, I don't know, working at McDonald's or packaging or accounting or anything. Literally everything you can think of will probably will take over in the next 50 years. So I think in my version of Utopia is where humans are kind of obsolete to the point where we are just creative thinkers by by a point and we just create new ideas or create for the sake of creating and we just live life uh doing what we want to do I like which we, yeah which we are kind of already here but the problem is there is still suffering and pain in the world but some some places will i feel like the world is going to change a lot in the next but just years. imagine, but just imagine if we remove all the consciousness, if we remove all the aggression from people's brains, if we remove everything that actually makes well, that's just, this world bad. Well, that's that's brave new world, and that's a dystopia. No, no this is a utopia for me. All right, <laughs> all right, evil Victoria. <laughs> all right, okay. Anyways. Uh, so you were expelled from the class because, what did you say? Uh, because I said that I can actually see some sense in uh, slavery. In slavery, yeah. yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> she was expelled from philosophy class for saying that she has some, she feels some, she finds some sense in slavery. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, we'll continue our discussions about this very interesting topics. You guys are the ones that will be living in this future world. And I think the more we discuss it, the better.